In this video, we're going to take a look at a hybrid modeling approach using Fusion 360 surfaces and forms. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to take a look at a workflow that I think is important when you're talking about using Fusion 360 forms. Now, this is a tool that we've already covered, but I felt like I wanted to cover it again and show a more practical application. So what we have here in the description is a downloaded model that contains blueprints for an AE86. This is a hatchback Toyota Corolla. If you don't know what it is, then... Uh, I don't really want to get into explaining it, but it's a, it's a hatchback rear wheel drive car from the 80s, very popular. So what we want to talk about is when you're modeling cars, and we've already done a few at this point, but when you're modeling cars, certain areas of the car are harder to control with forms. Things like the wheel wells, the arches, these kinds of things are typically easier for us to control accurately. For example, getting a true arc is easier for us to do as a surface body. So what I want to talk about is ways in which we can create some elements of a design as a surface, such as this, and then add some aspects of it with forms. So we're going to get started by creating a form, and I'm going to show the canvases. And what I want to do is I want to begin creating a new plane. And I'm actually going to do this. Let's go ahead and do this on the top. We're going to go ahead, and what we want to create is this small section of the fender right where it begins to roll over. So I'm just going to create a, a long, thin rectangle, no symmetry, and we're going to say OK. I'm going to make sure that I'm in box modeling, and then I want to just begin using edit form to sort of move this around. What I'm looking to do is I want to create just a section of the fender where it's going to blend into the wheel well. So I'm going to just bring these edges down get kind of close to the blueprint. It doesn't have to be perfect for what we're doing here, but I wanna kind of get it close. And then now we're at the point where we need to move over to a front view, double click the mouse wheel, and we need to bring this entire thing up to where it needs to be. Now this is gonna be kind of tricky, but let's go ahead and rotate around a little bit. I'm gonna start by double clicking the front edges, going to a front view, and then bringing them down vertically to where I think they need to be. And I'm going to do this again with the second set of edges. It's hard because when we're looking at something from the front or the side, we're in an orthographic view. And when we rotate around even just a little bit, we go to a perspective view. So what I'm looking to do from this view is I want to mimic the location of that hood edge. So again, I'm just going to bring these in a little bit. And then this is where we're gonna start rolling these down. So I'm just gonna pull this down just a little bit. And now we've got the starting point for the corner of the fender. Now from here, what I wanna do is I actually want to divide this up because I wanna have more divisions so that I can accurately attach to that surface. I'm gonna do this by going to Modify, Insert Edge. I'm gonna double click this one. I'm gonna to go to Both. And I'm going to use the exact, so that way it keeps the shape that we have exactly the same. And if we go to a smooth display, everything looks pretty good. That's probably going to be enough, but if we want to, we could subdivide it more. The more subdivisions we have, the more accurate we're going to be able to replicate this arc. So next, I'm going to extrude using Alt. I'm just going to bring this down. And then I'm going to take each of these individually. They don't have to be close to you know the attachment point. But I do find that it helps a little bit visually for us to understand how we are actually breaking up the surfaces. So you can see here now it's kind of close. I'm going to hide all of the canvases, all the blueprints, and I just want to take this edge and I want to touch it to that surface. So we're going to go to Modify, Match. I'm going to double click this edge. I'm going to match the edge, making sure that Tangent Chain is turned off. And I want to select three edges here. So I want to go all the way down to this one. And you'll notice that the preview in box display isn't matching exactly what we have here. And that's okay. But remember that we can also do things like add tangency or add curvature continuity. For this example, there's actually a fairly hard crease here. And if I were using this modeling approach for this car, then I would wanna make sure that I left that crease and I dealt with it later, either with surfacing tools or adding a curvature continuous fillet. We're gonna say, okay, I'm gonna go into smooth display and I want to take a look at the results. 
Now, a couple things happen. You'll notice that it added its own edge here. Now, this does happen from time to time, and this is problematic because if we hide the edge display, you can see that we've got some creases. So it took some liberties, adding some edges, and it creased them automatically. So I need to come in and uncrease those. And you'll notice that I'm not able to actually select or uncrease these, which is kind of interesting because it should be a creased edge because of what it's giving us here. Now, also the other thing that we wanna make sure we take care of is going to be this T-point. I don't wanna carry that T-point um, up to there, so I wanna make sure that it goes all the way up to that top edge. And you can see that we still have this edge that's, it looks like it's creased. So let me try one more time to see if we can uncrease that. And you'll note that it's just not working. So I'm gonna go into utilities, repair body, and note that there's nothing here for it to repair. We're gonna to try to go into utilities, make uniform, and you can see that there's nothing here to repair. So what this is telling me is because I have an edge division here in this surface, it is trying to attach a vertice to that point. Now, a way that I can get around that is by simply deleting that edge, and I can delete this one as well. And I, I need to think about this from the perspective of creating those surfaces. Now, if we finish the form, the resulting surface isn't bad, but because we didn't have the subdivisions, it didn't attach. So let's go ahead and go into the bodies folder and let's just hide that for now. When we look at the surfaces and we look at the canvases, this was split up and this method is often used when we're creating surface bodies for a car design or anything. Oftentimes we'll split them up so we have a division here and we can continue to build this up, we can continue to build this out, and then we really don't have to uh, worry so much about those attachments. What I wanna do is I wanna select that edge and I want to figure out where it happened. So it happened in this split body. If we roll all the way back before that split body, you can see that we have a single clean edge. Now that we have a single clean edge, let's go into create form and let's do the exact same process again. This time I'm gonna do it a little bit different. I'm gonna just uh, simply create it on the side view, no symmetry, and then I'm gonna work with it from here. So I wanna move it till it's above the center here. I'm gonna grab these edges, I'm gonna bring this down. I like to work in box display mode, so I'm gonna make sure I do that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just put these where they need to be. I'm gonna rotate around to a front view. This is obviously way out, so let's bring it out here. And then we want to slowly rotate. We wanna find those front edges. And these ones here, I want to pull over to where I think they need to be, which is about right there. So I'm gonna pull that over. I'm gonna pull these ones over. And I'll pull these ones over as well. Once we have that, I'm gonna take this top edge, sort of pull it over where I think it needs to be. Take this bottom edge, maybe pull it out a little bit. And at this stage, now is when we can continue to add some more. So I'm gonna pull down Alt, extrude this front edge. Gonna do it one more time. Do the same thing on the back, extrude it out. I'm gonna do it one more time for this example. And I'm gonna double click this edge from a front view. I'm going to extrude it out from a side view. I'm gonna scale these to get them roughly horizontal and bring them down. And then I'm gonna say, okay. Now you can see this is a, a much different result. We don't actually have, we didn't pull them down closer to the surface, but that's okay, the tool will still work. So double click this for the match edge. Now we have one single edge we can determine whether or not we want it curvature based or uniform for the spacing. We can say okay. And when we go to smooth display mode, you can see now this is a much better result. If I hide those edges, hide the canvases, you can see here that now we're getting that little bit of a flare out. And I didn't spend a lot of time trying to make this geometry correct, but the, the point here is that the surface that we get now attaches or is close to attaching to that. Um, now, theoretically, we should be able to come in and stitch these two together, but we might have to adjust things like our tolerance value until we get close enough to see that green edge there. And once we say, okay, now this is a single surface body all connected together using those stitching tolerances. So this is a way in which we can use the surfacing tools and the form tools 
to create geometry that is much easier to control with form tools, things like uh, larger portions of organic surfaces, but then we can use the surfacing tools, the parametric sketches, extrudes and lofts and things like that to create areas that are harder for us to control as a form body. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, it's, it's a little tricky. There are those nuances, like when we had the split where it tries to add an edge and sometimes it looks like a crease. But if you can sort of take a step back and figure out where those problems are, and if you're planning on modeling in this way, you can sort of set up ahead of time and decide whether or not this, this works, and then you can build your surfaces to suit. So at this point, if you have any questions, let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.